Hi, hi, Cynthia Allen here, and uh, it's a beautiful, rainy uh, day in Cincinnati, beautiful rain overnight. I got to take the dog Darby for a walk this morning, and oh my gosh, it was like between rains and just so, I don't know what that is. It's a, it's a kind of clean moisture in the air, you know, and a, a, a different kind of vibrancy, and um I'm hoping that we'll have that same kind of vibrancy here together. We're just going to give people a couple of minutes to get in from the uh, waiting area is the Zoom waiting area, as we call it. We're getting there close now. And we have some wonderful things in store for you. I'm going to pop up here. Um, Brian Shercliffe who's going to be with us here for a moment in time. Hey, Brian. Good to see you. And let me un unmute you, Brian. Find you. Hmm. Interesting. Okay. Get, get, get the lay of the land here for some reason. Hi. Hey, Brian. Oh. So Brian is my, as we would say, you know, in the uh, colloquial uh, phrase my partner in crime in teaching bones for life and even though I'm leading the live cast today Brian is the one who's going to be teaching these first next first these next first three segments of bones for life and uh yeah Brian so I don't know what do you think is there a reason why anybody should show up oh my goodness you were talking about the being out in the weather and I was out on a walk the other day and just was just amazed at the pleasure I found in my walking. And that's because of Bones for Life. Um, I think I've always enjoyed walking, but to be able to walk with such ease and to be able to feel like, you know, sometimes on walks before that, I would get tired or I'd ache, have some certain ache, uh, even in my younger days. And Bones for Life taught me things that I can do during the walk that can begin to change the way that I walk so it's easy again. And I, I'm just amazed at the, the gift this program has been in my life and I'm really looking forward to sharing it with more people and even being able to notice people as I'm walking like, oh, this person, I bet knows something of Bones for Life. Look what they're doing. Look at that nice <laughs> thing they're doing while they're walking. Yeah, I think maybe people don't realize how much about walking the program really is because that's the, the premier function of. Uh, being able to build bone health and also uh, feeding all the systems of the body. So while it isn't always called out, uh, it's a lot about walking. And so you, you get those incredible benefits coming through. And the great thing is it improves everything, right? You improve your walking, you'll improve just about everything in your life. So those premier functions in our lives, primal functions in our lives. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. Well, Brian, I think we're going to get to hear from four. I know we're going to get to hear from four of our uh, current students actually they've been studying with us for the last year and a half and i'm going to go ahead and bring up our first person here let me just okay. get uh get rachel coming up here and give her permission to unmute so we have here rachel velarde and I, is that how you say your last name Absolutely. Yeah, I realize I never get to hear people say their own last names. And so just a little bit of emphasis is, can be quite different. So uh, Rachel, I'm going to let you tell about yourself, but I'm particularly interested in how you decided to even, what was, what was the need in your life that made uh, Bones for Life pretty interesting for you? Uh, well, I came to really delve into somatic work which I started with through Feldenkrais because I had some voice issues. Um, and I am a singer, I'm a voice teacher. You can see my piano here in the background. Um, but I had some voice issues that medical, my insurance would not pay for. I knew it was because of how I was holding my body. I have no disc in this joint, so I have a congenital defect in my jaw. Um, and I wanted some quick, well, I wanted some to find relief uh, through the Feldenkrais summit. I ran across the bones for life process and I said I was like, this is really nice. It's some short processes. It's things I can integrate when I'm sitting at my computer. I can integrate when I'm standing and just I need something while I'm in the middle of singing. 
um, to just be able to find and I can do a quick stop and bounce on heels a couple times and it actually affects my soft palate. Many people have heard, lift your soft palate when you sing. Well, actually bouncing on heels helps the soft palate to release so it can lift more easily without me having to manipulate it. Um, and so I went into it for that and then I immediately found so much benefit from, um, you know, some of the processes are longer, but many of them are, are much quicker. But I, even in like little bits of longer processes, I immediately found so much benefit. I started integrating it into my voice teaching that I was doing with my students because I'm teaching them a singing lesson, but getting them somatic awareness as, you know, as Brian was talking about with walking, balance and the ability of your body to move is actually integral to singing. And so by improving posture, balance, ability to walk you're integrating and improving my singing instrument and able to help my students do that and i have a couple students you know who will take their hand and put it on their chest and just do a really just in the middle of the lesson they'll be like wait no and they'll just integrate that little alignment a little more awareness of access and then get back to singing mm -hmm. and um and for me I, again, when Brian was talking about walking, I was thinking, huh, when I'm walking from the parking garage to my office, I often think about Roman sandals and feeling how I'm, my foot's moving through and how much power I have. And if I have to get somewhere quickly, how can I move more efficiently to not put strain on my body? So it's really, it started out as something for my jaw and my singing, and it has turned into something I think about every day of my life. Wow. Okay. Yeah. So it's kind of enlivened you or your, uh, your, it's enlivened almost every aspect. It sounds like, because of course the way that we, we make our livings is a huge, huge piece of our lives. I mean, yes. um, and then we have the things that we want to do for fun. So it sounds like to me, you're just getting a, a tremendous amount of carryover in every direction. Yeah. It's really, um, I have something, you know, when I have an issue with my body, I can go to my manuals, <laughs> look up something or go to a video and go, oh yeah, that's what, that's what Brian said. That's what Cynthia said. Okay. And or just, I already know I have go-to tips and tricks that will help my body to realize that it doesn't have to hold tension. Mm, nice. Nice. So then you bring up something important, I think, too, there in an accidental way, which is that they're videos. And so you find the replays or the system we have for replays to be helpful. Yes, I do. And um, especially the, the, the way of bookmarking and writing, you know, when things are. So I can go back and just sort of get a specific portion of the video and find it um, is very helpful. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Have you found the sessions to be too long for you, Rachel? The sessions when we're doing them, never. Oh. <laughs> never. <laughs> I um, actually expect you to say, well, once in a while or. <laughs> actually, no. But I also know that the approach to this is if it is too much for me, I can stop and lay on the floor or just listen or imagine. I don't have to do it. it as long as I'm listening to my body, I'm doing it right. Mm. which sometimes is doing what people would think is nothing. But if we're listening and paying attention, even if we're not actively moving, our brain's doing work. Our brain is connecting with our body. And um, in some of the other things I've done, but not in the Bones for Life, I've actually never really felt like it's too much. Rich, I wonder, since you have this great background in, um, in singing, which means you have a great background in the use of, of breath, right? And uh, breath yeah. and the diaphragm, and then this connection to posture. Um, can you say anything about like what you feel the program is doing around breath and posture for you or your students? Uh, yeah, so much more awareness, especially, you know, singers are often taught, don't move your upper body, you know, keep it still. You're not supposed to breathe with your chest. And so we end up locking our ribs and we lose flexibility. 
And with the Bones for Life, I've been able to um, both myself and guiding my singers to find more awareness and flexibility. Um, you know, the, the crossed arms is uh, exercise is one that I do regularly with my students and to find ways for the, the rib cage especially to be able to be mobile. And when that is, then there's more of a sensation of breathing in 360, of uh, not having to work for breath, that the breath is just there. It's ease, we can use the elastic recoil that's built into the lungs. Um, sorry, getting technical on that. But just use our body systems and how this body is designed to move breath in and out of us without locking things down. Um, nice, nice, I like that, I like that. Well, I want to thank you so much for being here. I know you're going to hang out. I think you're going to hang out and somebody might have a question for you later. We're going to, what we're going to be doing, uh, folks, if we're going to go through and hear from each of these people, then there'll be a little bit of time at the end. If you want to um, make a comment yourself, maybe I see some people actually out there that have been in Bones for Life trainings with me. I see somebody who started with me, Kate, I see you, that started with me probably was in my very first class of Bones for Life, you know, almost 20 years ago. Um, uh, anyway, um, you might have something you want to say yourself or, uh, ask a question and we'll be happy to take those. Thank you so much, Rachel, for joining us. We're going to head over to Mary. I know Mary's been having just a little bit of trouble with, uh, her, with her, um, video. So let's see what's happening here. Mary, do we got you? It's good. Yay, great, Mary. Uh, great. So this is Mary McCutcheon. Mary is a, is a Feldenkrais practitioner, so she's a, a colleague of mine in that particular way, but she's also a physical therapist with a ton of experience and a very active, vibrant woman. So Mary, I really don't know for sure why you, you came to the program. <laughs> can, you just, can you give me a hint? <laughs> well, I hope. Um, actually, yeah, I, I have been a practitioner for about 24 years, and so a lot of teaching in in that time, but um, always curious about the Bones for Life, um, as definitely I would see things posted, and I kind of go, hmm, I, you know, I, I wonder if I should do that, and then life keeps you away from doing that kind of stuff, or looking into it more, but again, it was uh, one of the summits, um, I believe you taught, and um, laid down on the floor, head to the, to the wall first, then turned around, feet to the wall. And I got up and kind of went, what just happened? And so that kind of hooked me. Um, so then I had to look into it. So that's what I did. It took me a, maybe a year or so before I started really looking at it seriously. And also looked at my class and people that have kind of come in and out of my Feldenkrais class at the Y. And um, I, the more I got into it, the more I loved it. And so in June, I started teaching my Feldenkrais class, Bones for Life. And the more I taught, the more they requested. And so I just made them my Bones for Life class. <laughs> They, uh, the why even changed the name Feldenkrais Bones for Life, you know, I was just like, um, but people have returned, um, a recent lady who returned um, definitely has osteoporosis and is allergic to all the medications, so she is very excited and I'm so glad to have her back in class, so I think that's a big piece for me is that people are hearing about the class and returning. You know, maybe they decided Feldenkrais wasn't right, or maybe they're doing it on their own or whatever. I run into people all the time. Yeah, I still have the book. I still do it. And I go, good. That's like, if you do tapes, great. Um, if I lose somebody to tapes, I kind of go, I, I lose some of my best people to tapes. <laughs> mm -hmm. but, um, but I love teaching it. I love doing it. Um, and generally, I'll do it. Um, I'll, I take um, Brian's class one day a week. And I can usually kind of go, this is what I have to teach this week. And people are requesting stuff. So that's very exciting for me um, to come across it so quickly and then be 
right away teaching it and people kind of going, can we just do bones for life? <laughs> and I'm going, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I always want to teach what they want anyhow. So it's been really fun. Um, the most popular one I believe is now primal swimming. I think oh, I've taught yeah. it three times and they even say, I did this. I went home and did this. Yeah. So I love it. I mean, I loved it when I taught Helen Kreis and lessons and they'd say, I went home and did the other side and they text me, I did it. And I mean, I love that kind of stuff um, that people get excited about it. And that's what gets me even more excited to teach it. And there's, there's so much value in the movements are so easy uh, and, and doable. And then people are able to take those away and, and work on them. Whereas if I taught 45 minutes or 40 minutes of a film Christ lesson, wasn't always something that they could necessarily take home and, and replicate. So that's been very fun to hear. Yeah, wow. someone who's just currently signed up in the uh, first part of the Bones for Life training. So the very first part, by the way, so immersions one, two, and three are totally for your own health. They also are a prerequisite for teacher training, but that's really because you can't go take a, a Bones for Life class just anywhere. You can go take a yoga class just anywhere. So people are rarely going to sign up for yoga teacher training and have never done yoga. That's, that's going to be so highly unlikely. But for us, people would have to sign up to Bones for Life and have never done anything. They have no basis, basic foundation. So in order to be able to uh, continue on to be a teacher, you have to take the first three immersions, but those first three immersions are for your own health. Um, and as someone just told me recently that, and that is taking the first three immersions, um, they're actually not going to be going on for the teacher training, but they do teach. And they said, oh my gosh, I'm like, this stuff is so simple for me to give this homework to people. And I just find it so, so usable. So of course he's using it. I mean, who wouldn't use it because of that? What do you think as a physical therapist? I mean, what's in this that maybe would be um, helpful for a physical therapist to hear about? Actually, I'm an occupational therapist. Oh, occupational. I'm That's so okay. sorry. Kind of. Wanna, totally wanna wrong. Be, totally. <laughs> wanna well, be. I, it's, 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 <laughs> there's great things in here for occupational therapists too. So let's hear about an occupational therapist. Uh, I, of course, I did work in my last 20 years as a therapist in the school district, and I really found that even some of the ideas that were coming into the district from other places were really starting to go all towards that developmental level and felt and fell in Christ ideas. So that was very exciting for me because that's what I, all I wanted to do with the kids. I mean, I, I was mandated by that IEP, you know, you have to set your treatment plan and do this. Um, but, you know, on, on the side, the physical therapist and I were always like doing those developmental levels, which not only do kids need to go through that, those levels, but also adults need to rewire their nervous system using those developmental levels as we have become so habitual about how we move. And then those nervous, those nervous system starts to get all muddled and just bringing those people through that developmental level again, kind of clears those, that neural pathway to move better. So it's, it's kind of like unmuddling the muddling that we've done as we live mm -hmm. <laughs> and, and be habitual. And we're all like that. So it's not an anything new. Um, it's just, you know, once we get out of that uninhibited child movement pattern that we start to do things differently so yeah and actually i've had uh, one occupational therapist who's adapted the work to children to pediatrics um, and i also have um somebody who's worked in drama kinetics it's her own work called drama kinetics it's Pam Schooner, Pam Schooner, knew it would come to me. Oh. And actually, we've got a video out on her talking about it in, on YouTube. And she's, um, her whole specialty is programs for children. And she has just used it a lot with kids. So um, blended it in with her own style of approach. So I think it does have a, a nice blend because I think when people tune in uh, and, and, you know, you, you see all of you all, uh, I'm not sure how old Rachel is. She's the youngest one of us, but I'm going to say she might be 
already starting to get close to 40. Um, and then the rest of us are in our 60s. And, um, and a lot of you tuning in are older. And that's some that's a common thought is that Bones for Life is only for old people. I hear people tell me that old people. But uh, and I think old people are highly, <laughs> highly motivated to show up. <laughs> the older you get, the more motivated you are to show up and invest in your life. Uh, on a physical level that we get people of all ages really um, in the programs. Um, oh, so Rachel, I think Rachel's telling me she's 48. Yeah. So <laughs> gosh, you're a young looking 48. Yeah. Right? She's pretty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <Cool> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, uh, Mary, is there anything else you want to say before we wrap up with you and go on? Uh, not that I can think of. Yeah, I've just yeah. been having a lot of fun with it. And I'm so excited that my class fell in love with it so fast. Yeah. So I mean, they just started requesting, can't we just do that bones for life stuff? And I go, yes, we can. That's great. That's great. Because yeah. a lot of times people get a little, um, a little bit addicted to the sort of long languid explorations on the floor that come from Feldenkrais. And there's a little more physical challenge in terms of um, shorter, more active. I mean, it's not huge. It's not like a like you played pickleball this morning. It's not like playing pickleball for sure. No. But, <laughs> but it's but it is a it, it is a little more of a somatic approach and upright, right? And so uh, I'm I'm thrilled that they love it. Yeah, it's such a nice variety of you know sitting to standing to floor stuff mm -hmm. that they're just yeah they're they're loving it. And I'm loving it for that too. Yeah. For that reason, it's a nice variety. Good, good. Thanks, Mary. I appreciate sure, that. Thank you. Um, let me grab Miss Lorraine here. Lorraine. Hey there. Hey, how are you? Lorraine, I, I remember meeting you. Uh, I think I probably heard heard about you first from, uh, and we were going to talk about that. I heard about you first and this wonderful Pilates teacher uh, over in Columbus, Indiana. So let's, let's hear a little bit from you about why in the world did you end up in the Bones for Life program? You know, I have been in fitness for about 25 years and um, started with step aerobics and all those um, 90s things and in in 2005 I got into Pilates and I fell in love and I thought it was the discipline that was going to um, fix everything it was breath it was awareness it was balance strength flexibility all in one thing um, and then I met Carol Montgomery and she came to do some classes with me and um you know, I think I'm a pretty good Pilates teacher, but Carol is a physical therapist. She's also a Feldenkrais practitioner. Um, she's got all these credentials. Um, and I'm just like, wow, I'm, I'm teaching this lady. She actually taught me quite a lot. Um, and she kind of changed the trajectory of my career. Um, she referred some clients to me and I started doing a little more using Pilates as a rehab rather than um, let's get in shape, let's, you know, trim and tone. Um, I, I started to um, look a little bit into what she was into. And eventually I tried the gate um, class. That was my first introduction to somatics. She had tried to talk me into trying bones for life many times. And I just didn't get it. I didn't see the benefit. It was an expensive course. It was a big commitment of time and money. And I just I'm like, yeah, I'm doing all right. I'm doing all right the way I am. So, um, and that's where I met you as you mm -hmm. came to the, yes. I think yes. it was the, what in, uh, in Louisville. Louisville. Yeah. Louisville. Yeah. Yeah. Louisville, Kentucky. Yeah. At the gate wild human potential workshop that Carol and I teach together. Yeah. And that was kind of a big turning point for me. Um, that class, um, why I learned so much for me and it impacted my teaching, um, immediately, but, you know, I'm in a room again with, uh, people that are doing this for their own health. I'm there with other Pilates and yoga instructors. I'm there with physical therapists and 
it was it was just that first taste of somatics that kind of like you get up off the mat and it's like how, why do I feel so much better I didn't do anything you know um so yeah it was it was the the thing that made me know I needed to do bones for life and when I started with um when I signed up, I, I remember the conversation. You and I had a conversation before I signed up because it was still a big deal. And we were planning on doing this all live. Mm-hmm. And then right. then the world shut down and we're Zooming. And um, I wasn't excited about that. <laughs> it's not excited at all. But it turned out to be the best thing ever. It turned out to be the best ever. Isn't that wild? I mean, it, it, I think it has been, uh, I mean, there's definitely disadvantages, I, I, you know, uh, so um, I want to say that, but, but I do think it actually has been a, a, a really interesting upgrade in the training process that I never expected. And yeah. Well, so, you know, the way it was formatted before it was several weekends or four day weekends. And I don't know if anybody else has done a weekend workshop and you're so invigorated and you're so excited to come back and bring that to your classes. Um, And it's just you and your notes and what you remember and what you put together. The way we are now, it was that weekly bite-sized lesson, you know, four and a half, five hours. I don't remember what we did exactly, but um, it was very, very bite-sized. I've got the replays that I can go back to. I've got my notes. And um, it was much easier for me to incorporate little tastes in each week for my clients. Um, yeah. it, was that, it was that layering cumulative yeah. of that for me. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. I found that very beneficial. Um, I also never dreamed that I would have such a sense of community. Mm-hmm. I mean, I... I've got the best study group ever. I've loved the team projects, um, but but just, you know, you just don't think online you're gonna have that, but it's there, it's huge. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, so what does it offer you as a Pilates teacher though? Um, it is interesting that you say that. I mean, I feel like this is something that benefits everybody. And I know that I was biased. I thought this was something for old people. And and guess what? I might be an old people. (laughs) (laughs) You know, I'm I'm 60 years old and I teach classes, a couple of classes a day, five days a week. And I I have a very active uh, private practice and um, got a mild scoliosis. So, you know, for me, that sense of being able to restore ease for myself for my to to kind of resolve and restore for myself is amazing but i'm seeing such a difference in my clients and what i see you know i i'm zooming classes and i'm also doing live and i i probably see more of my clients in person than on screen so i have this luxury of watching them walk in the door and we chat before class and talk about everybody's aches and pains or what we're going to work on today. And, you know, when class is over and we come to stand, um, you see this soft smile on people's face. You see this lightness and refreshment. And, and that's why I do it, right? Because, because I know that it's making an impact. They feel better. Um, and then you watch people wipe off their mats and go get their phone and their shoes or go to the dressing room. And it's almost like I can see their old habits creep in. You know, they come from this I just in class, I feel great to back to the old slouch. And I'm, I'm not seeing that when I'm working with Bones for Life. I'm seeing, so the difference for me is held posture, muscular held posture versus that spontaneous uprightness. That's something that's like, wow, something's different here. And I want to hang on to that. I want this to stick. I'm seeing a cumulative effect over, over weeks with some of my clients. I'm, 
I'm seeing it more with my older clients. I'm seeing it more with the people with more issues. I don't know if it's because they want it more, but it's, it's pretty powerful. And um, I'm, I'm super excited. Wow. It's been great. That's a nice addition for sure then. And I wonder too, um, <clears throat> I mean, you must be working with people that have osteoporosis. You know, I'm going to give a talk about osteoporosis tomorrow. Sure. You must be working with people with osteoporosis. Do you feel like Bones for Life gives you uh, some additional options or not than, than Pilates does? Because it seems like Pilates is a little bit of a stretch for people with osteoporosis from what I've seen. So Pilates is very um, biased in flexion, spinal flexion, and we know for osteoporosis, that's kind of a big no-no. Um, I made a lot of adaptations. I do have a lot of gals with osteoporosis and osteopenia. And um, I flat out remind them that, you know, if they're not you're there yet, they will probably eventually be there. Bones for Life is that safe space where they can come in. Um, it is pulsations of pressure. It is vibration. It is um, building bone health in a different way, in a safer way. Um, and I see it as a compliment. I see it as an adjunct. I don't see it as, I mean, it's definitely, this is Bones for Life and this is Pilates, but I see it's a marriage made in heaven for mm -hmm. me. Yeah, because Pilates has such a clear indicate uh, a clear way of building strength, right? Yes, yes. But muscular strength, muscular strength, and that's and that's the thing that I didn't get, and that's the thing that I am bringing to my clients is there is a, a a different you know it's one thing to be strong and muscularly held, but if you're if you're off, if you're let's say you have a little scoliosis and your your walk is not um, great. Your gait's not that great. Um, do you really want to go put 10,000 steps of wear and tear on your spine in that? If there's a way that you could get yourself more upright, more vertical, better alignment, and then do your walk, mm -hmm. wouldn't you want to do that? W you know, wear and tear versus wear and repair. And, um, it's, it's all about being able to do a, do a little process, do a little movement, find that spontaneous correction, and, and then do your activity. It doesn't replace anything. It's just, it's, can we improve it? Don't we all want to be better, right? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's beautiful. That's beautiful. So is it, do you still think it was expensive? No, <laughs> no. <laughs> Just want, uh, no. just want to check back in. No, and did but, I deliver? Did Brian and I deliver? <laughs> you guys delivered, and uh, you, you just really opened up. My, I'm, I'm sorry it took me so long to get into this. I really am. I'm sorry I waited so long. But um, that said, you know, the education and the Zoom format and all of the resources that you provide and the replays, and it's it's, it's big for me. It's big. Great. Great. I'm so glad to hear that Lorraine. Thank you so much for joining us. And, uh, I'm glad to, I'm glad to, I, I wish I was seeing you in person at the same time that, um, you know, I really appreciate how the format has allowed us to really get to know each other at the same time. So yeah, good. Thanks dear. Thank you. Let me see, I got Miss Bruce Rubenstein coming up here next. And then we're going to hear from some of you all. And um, let me get Beth, Beth's picture up here. Hey, Beth. Let's see if I get Beth's introduction Hi. right. <laughs> Beth is a, is a physical therapist. <laughs> I've introduced Beth before, so I think I got this. Uh, and she also is a Feldenkrais practitioner with a lot a lot, a lot of experience, way more experience. Beth, when you signed up for the program, I had this little moment of, oh, what am I going to do with a Beth Rubenstein in my group? I mean, what have I got, what have I got to offer? I, uh, so uh, I don't know. Why don't you, why well, tell us what motivated you? Well, a lot of things, Cynthia. Um, I have to tell you just on that last point that you just said, what do you have to offer? One of the things I've been doing this a long time, I've been in this field for 40 years. 
you know, between physical therapy and Feldenkrais. And one of one of the things I love to do because I'm a teacher. I've taught, you know, I taught in universities. I'm, I'm a teacher, and I love to see how people teach. Mm-hmm. And I really take in how other people teach, and then I. I change, maybe I'll do it this way. I love the way that person taught that. And I love the way you teach, Cynthia. I love the way you teach. And I love Brian. And um, I learned so much from Brian. And um, I just think that's a really important part of this is the way you teach, um, the, way you, the, way, the way you know this work, you know, and it seems so easy for you. Um, so... I've been wanting to do this for a long time. Uh, Ruthie was in my trip. She came to my training. She um, came to LA and did like a a five day and, and I took it. And then she came back to do a longer training. And at that time in my life, I wasn't in a position to, I had, I've always had a private practice. I couldn't leave for that amount of time. It was a lot of days and I just couldn't do it. And many people in my area did it. And you know, it's just not something I could do. And I went ahead with Feldenkrais and did more of that and, and had a flourishing practice. And, um, but it's always been in my mind, you know, I want to do this. And, uh, and as I got a little older, um, I was once in my 60s, Cynthia. Um, <laughs> and uh, I had been diagnosed with osteopenia for a while, but, you know, when you're younger, osteopenia, who cares? You know, I'm, I was strong. I was healthy. My, my clients for the most part are people like me. They were very active, athletic. I danced. And, um, but now they're getting, we're, and seniors, I work with baby boomers and seniors and everybody's getting older and we don't move the same way. Well, we, we want to do the same things, but we can't. So, um, and this is, I've been watching this and, you know, with Feldenkrais, I do great. And, um, but I've wanted to do this for a long time. And, um, I've had a lot of, I've had accidents, I've had injuries and, um, and now I have young grandchildren and, um, I want to do the things I did with them, you know, and I can get up and down from the floor, but I want to run. I want to, um, run on all kinds of surfaces. And I'll tell you, even as a Feldenkrais practitioner, you know, oh, that's fear. There's always that fear because I don't want to fall because I, through the training, in the middle of the training, I was diagnosed with osteoporosis. And I'm not really afraid of these things much, but, um, you know, I have to be practical. And I feel like the Bones for Life has, it, it's given me uh, some basis. It's like, and uh, I think somebody said, Roman Sandal. You know, when I'm running with either my new little puppy dog or my grandson, um, I'm in that Roman sandal. My, I'm feeling every bit of how my foot is on the ground. Um, it's so practical. And a lot of my fear uh, is decreased, my fear of falling. Um, and I, beside the fact that I think there's some amount of, that it's going to help strengthen my bones. So I love the vibration. Um, I love that it can be done in so many different positions. I love it for myself. I can do something in sitting. I can, if I'm sitting and uh, I sit a long time to teach classes, I can just sneak something in for myself. Um, I can do it when I'm standing. Um, and of course, who doesn't love lying down on the floor? But, but I don't have to lie down on the floor for an hour. You know, I can lie down on the floor for 10 or 15 minutes. And um, I'm busy, <laughs> you know. I can't always lie on, I love doing a thousand Christ lesson, believe me. Yeah, yeah. But I, I can't I love it always do like it. Yeah. And um, I can incorporate the breathing. And there, there is one process in particular that I felt took me over the top of, my connection of my neck, which has always been my, my bad part, um, to my feet. And I can do that even when I'm getting ready to kick a soccer ball with my grandson. I just put my hand on there and do a little, do a little steering wheel. And okay, now I'm on my feet again. And combined with, with some others like the Roman sandal, um, I have some go-tos. 
that I do a lot. Um, and I've been, and I, I teach Feldenkrais classes, so I've been kind of sneaking it in. People come to me, lie on the floor. They come to me to lie on the floor and breathe and do these gentle movements, and they love it. And I have people have been coming for a very long time. So I started teaching, um, putting in Bones for Life processes. And at first I was a little worried about it because they're a little more active. You know, they have to pay attention. Um, even though, as Rachel said, you can always stop and rest, but it's not built in. And I like that because I'm a, I'm a moving kind of person. Um, but a lot of people who come to me want to rest. And so at first I was a little worried about it, but now when I say, okay, I'm going to do some bones for life, I'd be like, oh, we're going to do bones for life today. Um, and I decided that I'm very excited right now because I didn't want to do a whole class online. And right now our senior center is opening again. It's been closed since the pandemic. So I'm going to teach my first class starting in November. And everybody's very excited about do it. I, I wanted to do it in person to start for my first full on Bones for Life class. So I'm very excited about it. I really feel, and I've taught Feldenkrais there. Um, I taught a series and they could all do it, but there was some cajoling, you know, getting on the floor. This way I can, I can build up to what they can do more easier. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. So, and I get, I get, you know, from 50 to 95 in that class. Um, so it's really wonderful. And I have to say, because you said something about babies, I do work with babies because it's not my primary clients, but I can never refuse a baby. If someone wants me to work with a baby, I feel like, oh, I'm really lucky now. And I tell you, I do these with my babies. Um, sometimes it's like, oh yeah, crawling, you know? So I do the the creeping ones. And I just, um, it doesn't really look like that's what I'm doing. And obviously I'm doing it in a hands-on way, but it just reinforced the developmental processes to me, down on the ground, up from the ground, up to sitting. Um, and it's been just, it's been, it's good for them, but they don't really know what I'm doing. Um, but it's great for me. Um, it gives me a lot of satisfaction. This work, my clients who come to me, they don't really care what I do. They feel good. Uh, they walk in sometimes feeling good, but they walk out feeling great. Mm -hmm. But it feels good for me because I'm doing something easy, safe, um, that they can do. So I really love that. Um, and as for you know, why I did do it now. Um, like I said, I've been watching it, but I, like, I've been self-employed forever and I don't really have that fun set aside to go to all over the United States for advanced trainings. And then also I don't work, you know, I don't hunt, I don't eat. So um, I just couldn't do it. And it's something I've wanted to do. And when I saw this pop up, that it was online and it was with you, I'm like, I'm in. <laughs> and, you know, I didn't commit to the teacher training right away, although in my head, I knew I was going to do it. Um, but I thought the price was great. It was so doable. Um, besides, I got physical therapy CEUs. Mm. I mean, Cynthia is the best. I've never seen anybody so organized. Um, so... It's been a wonderful experience wow. for me. I, personally, for my clients, I think for my family, I think I'm a happier person, you know? Um, wow. That's a sweet ending right there. If we were to end right in that moment, I think I'm a happier person. <laughs> I love that. And it's it's early there. I know you said you're a good, a good morning person, but it's very early there for you. And there's, uh, there's something important about that fear, Cynthia, you know, at, as you're getting older, even though whether I feel like it or not, the truth is I am. And um, I don't have to be as afraid, you know, after this, this diagnosis that they tell me is very serious of osteoporosis, although I have a, a very low level. I'm in a, a group, an osteoporosis group. 
And I listen to what people write. I hear, I mean, I see what people write and they're scared. And they ask all kinds of questions about what kind of exercise can I do? I, I can never bend over again. I can never do this again. I can never, I can't rotate. Well, how do you drive? How do you reach over to get your cup of tea? You know, and I say, excuse me, excuse, but I don't because it's not an advertising. It's, I can't market. But um, people don't know. And this has so much to offer. Um, and they have fear. And I feel a little, I mean, bad's not the word, but guilty that I'm not having that fear. I think I'm going to be okay, you know, whether I take medication or don't take medication. But I'm somebody who, who puts my ducks in a row. I, I want to know all my resources mm -hmm. um, before I make any decisions. I'm not, I, I do not just listen to what people tell me to do. Um, never have, never will. So, um, um, sorry. The dance there. You got to really dance. <laughs> I know. Uh, um, so it's really given me, um, you know, a background that, I feel bad that people don't all know about this and I wish they did, which is another reason I want to teach it. Mm -hmm. You know, it's nice to do it for myself, but people need to know about this. It's just so lovely. Right. Well, you know, fear is useful if it can help galvanize you in a positive direction for yourself. But when you end up in fear and you don't feel like you have any options, then it's like uh, it, it just perpetuates more fear. And we actually know stress and anxiety. We'll talk about this some in the lecture tomorrow actually has an impact on bone health, on bone mineral density. So uh, we, we need to give people better options. And it sounds like that you're very clear that for you, this has become one of those better, better options. One of the things you want on your palate for yourself and then for you to be able to pass on to others. And I've loved getting to know you. I got to interview for you for the summit uh, three, maybe three years ago or so oh. now. Yeah, it's shockingly a long time feels like, but now I feel like I've really gotten to know you. It's been lovely. And I, and I want to just say something about being a physical therapist, if there's any more time, mm -hmm. um, because I am a physical therapist. I've been a physical therapist for 40 years and physical therapy was fabulous for me. And it's given me a, a really nice background and basis and my understanding of anatomy and physiology and of the brain. And, and I love that. Um, but I feel like um, I'm not as bound, you know, by what the book says, you know, we, we're, I don't, I can't speak for all physical therapists, but for the most part, you are a shoulder physical therapist or a back physical therapist or a osteoporosis in this group. People say, well, what, who's the osteoporosis physical therapy, I, physical therapist I should go to? And traditional medicine in general has a tendency to make the body, you know, break up the body. Okay, I work with this. I work with, and I love that I have learned over the years how not to do that. Yeah. So you can still get good results, but you're working with the whole person, the whole body. All oh, the time. better results. Better results. Yeah. You know, better results. I, I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you so much for that. I'm going to pull everybody else up to here. And so we can just have a little look here at who all we've been talking to. And let's see here. I know Brian is off uh, doing other things already. This was not a great time in his schedule, but what you can do is if you want to make a comment or ask a question, you can raise your virtual hand. Just remember that if you have your camera on, you're going to be seen by thousands of people. There's no controlling that. So don't have your camera on if you're not okay with having your camera on and being seen by thousands of people. And you could ask a question to one of these uh, gals, or you have a comment of your own or a question of your own. We'll take a few minutes for that. We won't be real long, but we got about 10 minutes or so that we can do that. Uh, let's see, Marianne. And let me grab you, Marianne, if I can also add you to our little uh... unmute. Hi. Good morning. Mm -hmm. I just want to say how grateful I am for having started a new life with these kinds of things. And I, I think I've done bo Bones for Life, Immersion 1 and 2. Mm -hmm. I'm in your better back right now. 
I have, and I do a Tuesday, Thursday hour with Brian every week. I don't know what we're doing. I just do whatever is suggested that we do. And I have a little toolkit that seems to be most helpful when I'm in um, the ouchy mode, as, as it were. I have um, spondylolis thesis. I'm 80, almost 88 years old, but I'm upright and mobile and so grateful to be um, helped by Bones for Life and Feldenkrais, et cetera, et cetera. So I just want to just say, if nothing else, just be grateful for the opportunity to do this. Oh, Marianne, that's so sweet. Really so sweet to hear that from you. We're so glad for your life, right? We're so glad for that improvement in your life. And yeah. Marianne, so people are always concerned about the length of time of the immersions. You're 88. So I would assume you may not have the same amount of energy as a 40 year old. Oh, um, yeah. Which might not be true, but you know. Maybe. Yes, it's true. It's true. How did the immersions go for you? How did you manage that long length of time? Do you mind saying? Well, I just, I'm the kind of person that if I'm going to do something, I'm going to do it. And that um, in anticipation, I thought, oh my goodness, this is going to be so long on a given day. But you know, you just start and you hang in there and the time passes and it goes well. And like even right now with you, Cynthia, with your better back, um, I, I do appreciate the time that we start at 1.30, that somehow that works. I have two other Zoom appointments on Friday mornings, but from 1.30 until three, in anticipation, I think, ooh, ooh. but as it goes along, I've been there, I've hung in there from beginning to end each time. And as far as I can see, I'm, I'm only going to have to do a replay one time. I will be there in, in person, as it were, on Zoom for all the other lessons. And mm -hmm. I'm grateful. And so timing, you just have to get in the Nike mode and do it. <laughs> okay, Marianne has spoken. <laughs> Thank you, Marianne. <laughs> Uh, yes. And, you know, I will say that I'm glad that that's worked for Marianne. The, really, it's also worked for a number of people to, uh, let me just get my um, muting taken care of here. It's also worked for a number of people to start out each time in the class, do the first couple of hours, then um, do the rest of it on replay through the week. Or some people tell me they do a couple of hours, they take a longer break, and then they come back. We do have a long 30 minute break in the in the middle of it. Uh, and then also, I think one of the things to recognize about the length of the time, because I see that that was a big part of the discussion is that it's constantly changing. So we're do something, we talk, we walk, uh, we do something, we talk, we walk, we take a, a five minute break, we do something, we talk, we walk. I mean, there's a, there's a, or, or have a lecture, a long discussion, you know? So there's, it's, it, I'm not going to say that it's not going to be fatiguing for some people because it is, some people are not going to have the energy to do that whole thing, depending on what's going on in your life, but the replays do work for most people. Now you do need to be somebody that will, be able to find your way in to do a replay. Um, we've got it really well organized for you. But if you're not somebody that does that, and there are plenty of people who don't do great on replays, um, and I'm probably one of them, to be honest. So um, then I understand that it's probably not a good choice for you if you don't feel you have the energy. Let's try to see here if we've got anybody else who wants to ask a question or say anything before we wrap up and thank these. Wonderful ladies here. Am I missing anything? I don't think I'm missing anything. Okay, let's see. Just gonna click through the images here, make sure nobody's like frantically waving their real hand to me instead of their virtual hand. Okay, good. Listen, um, I guess you all, let me see, can I, un how, how can I unmute you so you can, you're, it looks like you're unmuted. I'm going to unmute the four of you here. 
Okay, there we go. <clears throat> thank you, thank you, thank you so much. It's been such a fun time exploring with you. I can't believe our time together is about to come to an end. Uh, there, did you see a couple extra virtual hands, Rachel, that I missed? Yes. Oh, oh. Owen and Chris are have their yeah. hands up. Oh, well, huh. Ellen and Chris. That's Ellen, funny. okay, I see, I see Ellen now. Okay, maybe I just wasn't going down far enough. Ellen, okay, we'll take Ellen. Ellen, I'm gonna put you up if you've got your camera on. Okay. I do, hi. Hey. Um, one of the things I'm unclear about is the immersion is uh, an immersion. And then um, after the four and a half hours or whatever, are you left with work to do on your own? If, if you're doing this for your own um, learning, then, and you're not taking a class, kind of how do you put this into practice in your life if your aim isn't to be a teacher? Mm. That I'm unclear on. That's a great question. That's a great question. I'll say something then if anybody else wants to help Ellen out with this. So uh, because it's uh, four and a half hours, uh, usually every Sunday or Monday. Uh, that's a pretty big chunk out of people's week. So I don't think very many people uh, would appreciate homework or do it because they're like, I already just did a really big chunk of it. However, we do hear from people that, oh, I, I, I am playing with certain things. And we encourage people to identify what of the things that they're experiencing are making the biggest differences for them and to write those <laughs> in their notes and record them in their mind, because those are the ones that you want to at least initially go back to over and over again. They're going to be easy to motivate yourself to go back to because you, you felt great about them. You knew they made a really positive choice change for yourself. Um, one of the things that happens in the program too, is that it <coughs> to make changes in how you're functioning day to day immediately. I mean, I think it's really quick for the majority of people. What Lorraine was saying she saw when people are walking out the door. Um, so that um, there's a few things that we call bread and butter movements. Ruthie, Ruthie Alon that um, uh, Beth mentioned earlier, and I need, should say have said her last name then, is the creator of the work. Um, and those things are super easy to use every day. And we stress those bouncing on heels, something, some form of alignment. Those things are so easy that you learn them pretty quickly. And then you can start to do those. And we encourage you to do those every day, especially bouncing on heels. If you've got uh, bone health issues that you're um, worried about. Anybody else want to add anything to that for Ellen? Um. I, I would just say, I, I agree with what Cynthia said, but we also, as Rachel said, have study groups and they're not necessarily study groups to, to go toward teaching because we have somebody in our study group who's not going to do the teacher training. And we get together and we talk about what was our favorite and somebody leads an, a process. And, um, you know, the, the camaraderie in that group is, is fabulous. Uh, and somebody asked recently, well, are we going to continue our group after, after you all are certified? And it hadn't crossed my mind not to continue that group. Um, and that's, so, an, that's you know, an optional thing that we encourage, but um, I would say, you know, a smaller number of people do it. But yeah, it's a great thing. Thanks for yeah, So you, you also have that option because you'll meet people in your, in your class. Mm -hmm. Lorraine, you looked like you wanted to say something too. Yeah. I just wanted to say that um, there are so many little bite-sized quickie things that you can do. Like Brian said, when he's taking his walk, if he feels like he's off, he can make a little adjustment. Um, and you will learn those in your first few classes and you'll have access to that replay. So you don't have to remember it. You don't have to write notes. You can just go back to that replay and do it again and experience it again. And a lot of the processes like bouncing on heels every single day, maybe even a couple of times a day, you're, you're going to want to, you're going to like it. <laughs> mm, I think that, um, that, you know, like Feldenkrais, like some of the other somatic educational pieces, I mean, you're learning awareness. So that's such a big piece of this work too, is that you're 
you're learning to pay attention. You're learning to say, ah, okay, I know I can do it this way. And it makes a big difference because it's easier to pay attention to. And I think that's like the beginning of like making changes in your life, period, is that once you have that awareness, once you have that catching yourself going, ah, here I am being me again, uh, that, that it's more likely that you'll make those changes for the better. Thanks. Thank you, Ellen, for the, the question. Uh, and also replays are available to you forever and ever and ever more. So uh, <laughs> they're, they'll be up there for you as long as okay. Larry and I are kicking and have a platform for you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Uh, let me grab Chris here in just a second. Chris. Hi, um, <clears throat> are you hearing me? Yes, we hear, you. we hear you. I can't get rid of this thing off my, um, I'm probably gonna bore other people because I joined something, paid something for repeats and all that. I went to the very, committed to myself to a very first, to do one a day during that. The very first one I did something that I hurt myself. And I never went back mm. because I was in pain for over a week. I sort of realized that I avoided doing tw twisty things. And this was like, oh, that's something I naturally kind of knew not to do in my morning stuff. And um, I need, I'm mildly dyslexic. I need help in maneuvering the sites. I couldn't get into the sites. And I was wondering if there's someone who I want the basic basics, something that fits. I know I have to have replays because I go back and forth to the UK. Um, and once I get started, I'm committed. I've been doing my stretches in the morning for years and I can get up off the floor and I am 78. You know, I've surprised people that I can get up off the floor and um, I do power gardening, <laughs> but I, I don't, you know, I don't have the, I got a lot of computer talents or whatever, but not getting into a program and figuring out where I should be at what time. Okay. So, uh... I, I assume that it's a program you signed up for with us. And if you send yeah. email, I'm going to type it into the chat for you right now. But if you send email to support at futurelifenow.com okay. or Chris, you reply to any email we send you and say, okay. told me you will help me figure out how to access my class and use it. Um, they, they will help you. Okay. So I hear your distress over it and your disappointment. And I also hear not only, and, and that's, that's so valid, right? You, you, you committed for yourself and you're like, I'm ready to do it. And then something didn't work out. And then also I hear that frustration of getting injured. And, you know, there, it is, it is difficult to um, find our way in taking some risk and doing something new and, and staying safe. And even though I would say of the work, Feldenkrais and Bones for Life are some of the absolute safest things out there you will ever explore. There is no such thing as something that doesn't have some risk to it. I mean, lying in bed has a risk. It's probably the worst risk of all. So <clears throat> um, you came out of it. Uh, clearly, you've somehow come out of it, even though you got you had a really bad week right afterwards. And uh, and I hear that you're ready to take advantage and try again. <clears throat> and when you go back and try again after the staff helps you get in and you start figuring your way around, when you try again, be sure that you know you think about doing way less than you can do. So in Bones for Life, we talk about doing twenty percent or less of what you can do. Twenty percent or less of what you can do. So in Feldenkrais, we often talk about doing some things in your imagination. I'm gonna grab you, Lisa. 
um, in, in your, um, your imagination. Uh, so that's a weird one. When you're an active person like you are, Chris, you're pretty active, right? So you, you're going to come and you're going to think, well, I should, I should do what I can do. Um, but especially since you already had an injury, come think about 20% or less, even doing some things in your imagination, you will be amazed at the difference that doing less will make for you. And the other thing I just want to say after you get in and you start is also do things so much slower than you would ever imagine doing because you're a go-getter. I hear that from you. You're, you're used to going and getting things done. And um, the slower you go, the more you'll be able to attend to yourself, the more you'll be able to attend to yourself. Okay. Do you feel like that you'll be able to follow through, reply to an email? Well, I'm, I'm going to do the email. Yeah, yeah sure. Yeah, 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 great. Yeah, so yeah. good. So it's just reply to an email. Say Cynthia said that you would help me. You can ask her to remind uh, remind you all of what you what she needs, and I'll I'll remember as long as you don't wait a long time. I'll remember. You wait a okay. week, I might not remember, but if you do it next couple of days, I'll remember. Okay, Chris. Okay, dope. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Cynthia, I also put Brian's class info into somebody was asking about. Uh, um, yeah, he needs to register them. So if they need, if they want to do his class, um, please put your email down here and I'll grab it and hand it on to him. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for that. Let's, let's find Lisa, 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 who's been apparently trying to raise her hand. I think we luckily have one Lisa. Here we go. Yeah, I was raising my hand too, because I apparently, even though I've been on here 15 weeks now, <laughs> I can never find my reactions because I'm either on my phone or my iPad or my uh, computer. I basically typed in um, my personal testimony, which in a few words was, I thought I was going to have, I've been taking Feldenkrais for about three years, just once a week. And it wasn't me that was going back it was my body that was going back. And I, I try to explain that to people because um, my voice in my head was saying, oh, I got to make time for that class. Um, even halfway through, I'd be like, when is this going to be over? But it was my body that would get up like all of you have said and walk out of that room with a smile on my face. And um, I was just fascinated that that would happen all the time. But then the left hip, the non-surgical hip, uh, started acting like it was going to need surgery. So I texted my Feldenkrais instructor and I said, I really just, they said to get physical therapy. I really just want to get somebody that knows, at least knows your work. And she's like, well, I'm a, I'm a physical therapist. <laughs> so we kind of laughed about that. She came over a couple of times, um, showed me how to walk. She goes, I don't care if you have to walk with a cane or if you have to walk sideways or upside down, if it feels lovely, and if you're aware of it, and if you're going slowly, then that is all you have to do. I'm like, wait, don't you have leg lifts for me to do? Or, you know, all these other things. She goes, no, you do what's lovely. And I did. And I'm not kidding. Within about three weeks, I had no pain. So um, uh, she ended up emailing me the link to the summit, uh, which long story short, I'm in bones for life now. And um, like each one of you have said, I, I don't even know if I can say it any better than any one of you have said it. It's absolutely fantastic. You cannot do this work wrong. The only thing that could be wrong is if you hurt from it, then you know you're doing it wrong. But otherwise, as long as it's lovely and you're aware of it and you're going slow, and then I'm a psychotherapist. So um, I was telling Sandy, I'm like, oh my gosh, the words you use in class are always the words I'm using with my people. But I'm, I wasn't using it with my physical body. I was using it with, you know, mind to mind. And um, so it heals not just our physical bodies, but it transfers over everywhere. And I do believe, um, Chris, I have a little ADD and I think it's even quelching or calming, not quelching, but calming um, that as well. 
because I'm learning to take the work from Feldenkrais and Bones for Life into all these other areas of my life, just organizing my home, you know, going through uh, financial papers, um, intimate relationship with my boyfriend and a relationship with just somebody at the grocery store. It's like, wow, we can actually, you know, take those seven keys um, and practice those in every area of our life. And I just, I love it. And like Lorraine said, I got friends all over the world now. <laughs> Thank you, Lisa. I've been wanting to talk, but yeah, I well, it. you. I'm glad. I'm glad you got the chance to talk. I mean, that was <laughs> that was very worth hearing for sure. Very thank you. Hearing. Yeah, thank you. I have no idea if I'm going to be an instructor, but apparently we need this work out there, so it'll it'll happen. Yeah, yeah, it's happening for sure. It's happening. Thanks, Lisa. Thank you. Oh, that was such so heartfelt, wasn't it? Very wonderful. So, well, I know we're running late on time now, so I am going to start to wrap us up here. And uh, all, all five of us want to say thank you for hanging out with us. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank Lorraine, you, thank you. Beth, Rachel, Mary. And My all pleasure. Of you, all of you. Thank you, Cynthia. Okay, anybody who wants to show up tomorrow, you've got a link today for tomorrow's lecture. I think it's 4 p.m. Eastern time because it's the only time I had available in my schedule for the lecture on uh, osteoporosis and bones for life. Is it a match made in heaven? Thanks. Bye-bye. Thank you.